USADA is the company employed by the UFC to catch out their fighters on their roster for using performance-enhancing drugs. In my opinion, the information that I'm going to show you in today's video will suggest that one, USADA is not doing a good enough job of trying to catch out fighters that are on performance-enhancing drugs, and two, I truly believe... And I'm not going to make any final accusations here, just for legal reasons. That you could suggest that maybe, just maybe, USADA don't really want to catch certain fighters that are on performance-enhancing drugs for the benefit of the UFC. Maybe. Just maybe. I'm not saying any... I don't want to make any definite accusations. But I think there's a pretty strong chance that maybe they're working in cahoots with the UFC, the company that employ them and pay them their wage to exist, to maybe help out the company of the UFC by not ruining a lot of their big name stars, by not testing them as much. We start right away with Conor McGregor, okay? This is the USADA testing database. This is a very important piece of equipment that we have access to, information that we have access to as an MMA community and we need and we need to make a much bigger deal out of this than has already been made okay people realized shortly uh, recently they realized that Conor McGregor one of the biggest names in the sport has not been tested once in 2022 according to the database this database records how many times every fighter on the UFC roster has been tested it also records you know, you can find out what period of time they were tested within, how many times they were tested within that period of time by going into the quarters section. And this is like, you know, January to March and such and such. And you can find out what year and how many times in each year they were tested. And you can see right here in 2022, Conor McGregor was not tested by USADA. Now, you might be saying, well, maybe he's not even on the list because... He's currently not in the USADA thing. Well, in 2021, he was tested 11 times. And I'm going to make a real crazy accusation here. And maybe suggest that was done towards the start of 2021. That's all I'm going to say. Okay? But in 2022, for 10 months now. We're in October of 2022. This isn't January or February. Where it's somewhat excusable, maybe. For an entire 10-month period... Conor McGregor, the most important person to the UFC right now out of anyone because they can't sell pay-per-views right now. If McGregor comes back after his broken leg, he sells a quick $1.7 million pay-per-view card right now. He's not being tested by USADA. Why? I know why. We all know why. McGregor needs non-USADA approved supplements, let's just say, to help his knee or his leg recover. He needs it. It was a clean bone break, a terrible, terrible injury. In order for it to return to its peak form or any usable form whatsoever, he's going to need some USADA banned supplements. But how is that allowed? If USADA were to come out and say, listen, we are going to organize... And this is where we want some kind of transparency, USADA. Jeff Nowitzki. Haven't heard from you in three years. Unless you're giving someone a jacket, which we all know is BS. Oh, oh, look, everyone. A funny jacket. Ignore everything going on behind the scenes with John Jones. Holly Holm got a jacket, everyone. Oh, shit. Everyone's accusing Israel Adesanya of being on something. Oh, a jacket. We, we have a jacket for him, everyone. It's like, we, we get it. You're giving out jackets, okay? But it's time to actually be the head of a drug testing organization and be transparent with us and say, you know what, maybe McGregor needs certain things that are banned by USADA to heal his leg. We're going to do a controlled assessment of this. We're going to test him before and after. And we're going to make sure that there's a window of time after he's used these things to help his leg heal appropriately that he's not allowed to compete for. But we haven't heard any of that by USADA. They know he's on something, so they're intentionally not testing him because they know they'll catch him out on something. How can you tell us that you're trying to catch people out for PEDs if when you know someone's on them or likely to be on them and they're a massive asset to the company, you're not testing them? 
Chris Weidman broke his leg in 2011. Or 2021, 2022. But he's been recovering from a broken leg the same way McGregor has. So let's see how many times Chris Weidman, not so much of a big value asset to the company, has been tested in 2022, recovering from the same thing that McGregor is recovering from. Chris Weidman. He's been tested this year. Not a lot. They don't want to catch him. Four times this year. But he's been tested. He's not McGregor in massive bouts. If anything, the people in the big bouts should be tested more often and more than the people who aren't in those massive, humongous bouts. Okay? Because they're more important for the history of the sport, for the legacy of others involved in those fights as well. But they're testing Chris Weidman, who had the same problem as Conor McGregor and likely needed the same things to help him. But they're not testing McGregor at all. In my opinion, four times for Weidman in 10 months isn't enough. He's a ranked middleweight contender. You should at least be tested once a month. Can we get once a month? We move on to some other names that I want to go through right here. And we start with a man who right now is probably the most, amongst active fighters, other than TJ Dillashaw, is probably the most high-profile, known drug user and PED user within the sport, okay? He's not active at the moment, but he's going to be, and it's implied that he's going to be. The UFC knows that at some point he's looking to come back. And you may have heard of him through the screams of his ex-wife or just across the headlines for all the good charitable philanthropy work that he's been doing. Um, John Jones. Three times this year. John Jones. The most high-profile example of a man who's most definitely, definitely abusing PDs in his career. He's been tested three times this year. Three times this year. Okay, and I hope you've been able to see all of these test counts. I'm going to reduce the size of my face for a second here. Okay? Three times this year, John Jones has been tested by USADA. The man that is bulking up a massive amount of muscle now to heavyweight. A massive amount of muscle to go to heavyweight. He wants to be bigger than Nganu, he says. All he's doing is looking to pack on muscle. And they've only tested him three times. Yuri Prohaska is the current light heavyweight champion. He's fought once this year. So don't make this a thing about activity. He's fought once this year. In my opinion, could you assume that maybe he's on something? Yeah. Is there a real reason to assume that Yuri Prohaska is on some kind of performance enhancing drug? No. There's no. He's not growing a boob. He's not got all of the obvious signs that he is on a performance enhancing amount of drugs or a performance enhancing drug session. There's no evidence to really concretely say that he's on something. There's no, like, smoke before the fire, if you will. There's no breadcrumbs on Yuri Prohaska. John Jones, coming back in December, arguably, probably next year early, he's definitely wanting to come back, and the UFC, UFC are in negotiations with him, has been tested three times this year. Big name, by the way, that they need to come back and make these, heavyweights fight, these heavyweight fights happen with, otherwise they're probably going to lose a lot of money on him. Yuri Prohaska is the current light heavyweight champion. Thirty-six times in 2022, it's October. I don't know about if you guys know the maths there. That's almost once a week that Yuri Prohaska has been tested. Thirty-six times. This might be the most tested man in the history of the company. Genuinely. This may be the most tested man we've ever seen in a company. He's had one fight this year. In May, at UFC 275, against Glover Teixeira. He may be fighting in December. We don't quite know yet. It's not confirmed. He's been tested 36 times this year. Okay? That's maybe once every month there's a week that he doesn't get tested. That's that amount of times. And yet, John Jones... The guy who's probably sourcing up beyond belief right now has been tested three times by USADA. Where are their priorities? Are they trying to catch people? Conor McGregor's been tested zero times because they know he's on something. Allegedly, they know he's on something. 
Zero times he's been tested. John Jones is very likely on something because he's had a history and a past of doing it before. And it's proof. There's proof of it. They've caught him doing it. Three tests in 10 months. They know he's coming back. Year he's fought once, he's had 36 tests. If you want to look at champions and assume which ones of them have been on the source or have maybe taken something, in my opinion, you would look at maybe, I don't know, a champion who's grown a boob. Maybe. I don't know. Maybe a champion who's grown a boob in Israel Adesanya. So let's see how many times he's been tested in comparison in comparison to Yuri Prohaska. He's been tested 11 times, which is about once a month, maybe just over once a month. In my opinion, why are we testing Yuri 36 times if the people that are actually showing signs that they might be on something aren't being tested that much whatsoever? I believe fair play at least fighters should be tested at the top level once a month at random but i also know that these tests sort of ramp up towards fight week so they end up getting tested before after when they touch down in the area like the moment they get back to wherever they came from after fighting you know they get tested at the start of fight camp so it's a lot more localized around the time that they're fighting so this probably isn't once a month it's probably once every three months and a lot around the month that they're fighting during. You know what I'm saying? Why is Israel Desanya being tested less than Yuri Prohaska by three times the amount when he's the one who grew a boob? Then you look at another champion whose head shape keeps changing, whose dad is a corrupt pharmacist. I'm not telling you about a superhero in a comic book called Roid Man, because that sounds like who I'm describing. Dad's a corrupt pharmacist, changing head shape, came up in the Black Zillions gym, was mentored as a fighter by fighters like Alistair Overeem, Vitor Belfort. So all I'm going to say, I'm not describing a comic book supervillain named Roid Man. I'm describing Kamaru Usman, the champion, okay? Built like an absolute madman as well. Whilst only training a small amount of time into his actual physical appearance. And a lot more time into his cardio, into his functional skills, into his skills in general, wrestling, drills, striking, all of that other stuff, but still looking the way he does with a corrupt pharmacist as a dad, because that's legit. How many times has he been tested compared to Yuri Prohaska? 14. That's still a lot of times, but why is Yuri Prohaska being tested 36 times in 2022? Surely, if you were really looking to catch people, you should be focusing your attention on where there might be a bit of a trace that someone's on something. Where there might be an idea that someone's on something. Maybe you should divert your attention and they should be tested 36 times. Why are we focusing on Yuri, who at this point is probably like, right, it's Wednesday again. Here they are. USADA's in town in the Czech Republic. Greta Thunberg must be having an aneurysm about this. USADA's getting jets over to the Czech Republic once a week to find Yuri Prohaska in the middle of the woods and get a sample from him. Usman's in America. I don't understand. I don't understand. And even when you look at TJ Dillashaw, TJ Dillashaw, remember Yuri Prohaska, 36 times. TJ Dillashaw. He's coming back after literally openly admitting taking performance enhancing drugs after USADA caught him taking them. He opened, he didn't try and blame it on anything. He said, you know what? I took it for that fight against Cejudo. I'll take my punishment of two years off. He's coming back into a title fight against Aljamain Sterling. Nine times? Less than Usman. Less than Adesanya. Nine times. Why are you testing the guys that have no signs of being on anything or no history of being on anything and not testing the amount of people, you're not testing the people that have shown that they've done it before and they may be willing to do it again and they show all the signs of being people that are on it. Nine times and it's still a lot of times. But if we're diverting all of this economy and all of the uh 
resources to go to the Czech Republic once a week to, to the middle of the woods to find Yuri Prohaska. Can we not divert that attention to TJ Dillashaw in the bit? Poor Aljamain. If Aljamain Sterling's been tested more than TJ Dillashaw, knowing the difference in history between them on this topic, if Aljamain Sterling has been tested more than TJ Dillashaw, the same amount. The same amount. So you're telling me, Usada, that you have the same amount of suspicion of Aljamain Sterling and TJ Dillashaw, in my opinion. This is just so corrupt from USADA with the Conor McGregor and the John Jones circumstance that we're looking at here. So corrupt from them. Especially on the John Jones and the McGregor side of things. That's, that's... If I was employing you to catch people on roids and McGregor and Jones, first I find out McGregor's not being tested at all. And John Jones has been tested three times. Yuri's been tested 12 times more than John Jones. You're fired as a company trying to find people on PEDs. That's it. Yes or no? Chat. There's no chat. I miss chat. I go live every day. Aljo's been tested the same amount of times as Dillashaw. Dillashaw should be the 30s and the 40s. Dillashaw shouldn't have a week off of being tested. If you can afford 36 trips to the Czech Republic from America, where you're based, sure, they might have a European station of USADA that makes it a little bit easier. I get it. If you can afford that many trips to the Czech Republic, 36 times in 10 months, give me 52 on Dillashaw during his comeback a year. Okay? Give me 52. I want 54 on Jones. Couple weeks of the year, we double up. Okay? And I want McGregor, the biggest name in the sport, to at least be tested as much as the other fighters. But they know why they're not doing it, because he has to be on something to heal his leg. And they know they're going to catch him. So what are they doing? Are they trying to defend the UFC? Or are they trying to catch people on PEDs? That's the question. Give me some answers. Like and subscribe. Thank you for watching. Toodle Pip, I'll see you later. Goodbye. We need to make a bigger deal out of this. We really, like, poor Yuri. Yuri's not got blood left. <laughs> you saw that, you saw the knocks, and he's like, it's like John Jones is knocking, and Yuri's the ex wife in the house. Oh, I'm co coming, honey. You know what I mean? Give me your blood. You know what I mean? You saw that's just draining Yuri for everything he has at this point. Jesus. Poor Yuri. Justice for Yuri. <laughs> Justice for Yuri Praska. Dude's going to have no blood left for his rematch against Glover. See you later. Goodbye. Toodle pip.